Welcome, dear friends, to the Taviret, a Wheel of Time podcast hosted by three gentlemen for whom the very wheel itself bends around. Without further ado, here are your hosts, Bill, Rob, and Rich. Hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to the Taviren, a Wheel of Time podcast. I'm going to be your tour guide again this week. My name is Robert. And I'm back, Rich. And Rich, I'm we're here. back again. Yes. Hey, Rich, I'm how here. you doing? Fantastic. Hey, I feel like know, we haven't talked in a while. I know. And you know what? I, I, I When I came home today, there was some guy hanging out by my doorstep. Do you mind introducing yourself, a random person? Hey, it's me. <laughs> it's Bill. 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 Back from paternity leave. Welcome back. How goes it? <laughs> How goes father life again? Uh, part two. Uh, very, very good. Uh, if you you may hear some weird little squeaking noise throughout this recording, it's because my uh, child part two is strapped to my chest. <laughs> <laughs> we we are premiering our fourth host. Our fourth host. I think it's ironic that that she premieres on this uh, chapter because we are introduced to some key female characters in 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 the wheel of time. So I think it's perfect timing. I'm just excited to have the three of us back. We <laughs> yes. only had a three-parter, a threesome is what we called it earlier today. Yeah, wow. okay. I was going with the three-man three man press, but, you know, Rich, if you want to go there, oh, I whatever. Went there. <laughs> That's this, for all of our awesome listeners out there. <laughs> yeah, this this is the chapter where we get introduced to uh, Robin Williams as Mrs. Doubtfire, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> wait, I, wait, no? I, did read, I did read the right book, didn't I? I, 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 I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> it was a drive-by fruiting. <laughs> oh boy. You know, we are going over chapter 40 entitled The Web Titans. When last we left Rand, he was falling off the side of a wall, dreaming of false dragons and Aes Sedai as he, as he was falling into, into uh, darkness, literally, <laughs> or falling head over heels, as I put it. As always, we start off with uh, any do iTunes or Apple Podcast reviews. Uh, we don't have any since the last one that we received just before the holidays. As always, now that Bill's back, there's no reason you should not give all the love in the world. Bill should get all the feels, all the love. Always a good way to help us make us the best we can be for you. It's all cyclical, guys. It's circle of life. You make you make us want to be better podcasters. Yeah. Just, just I'm just film. average, but all right. Everyone, you can just come and fill me up whenever you want. <laughs> okay, we got we got this guy in the corner talking about threesomes, and we got this guy in the corner talking about being felt up. What am I doing? <laughs> you obviously are not on the right podcast. <laughs> I'm stuck in the middle, and I don't know if I like it. You're in a round well, of sandwich. Welcome to Tar. What? Welcome to Tar Brienne, a BDSM podcast. I'm so glad you're back. Oh God! <laughs> you can finally put that explicit tag back on the episode. <laughs> yeah. It's about to get dirty. Oh my god. There. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> oh my god. Um anyway, so what the hell do we do, Rob? And we are well the next <laughs> next thing we talk about Wheel of Time news. Not really much news, but although we did get a screen capture on Twitter, Rafe posted a screen cap of what appears to be Rand Al Thor standing amongst what seems to be the mountains of mist. Do you guys see this on Twitter? I did not. I missed that. He no, posted I missed a, that as well. Yeah, he, just yesterday, but it's been, you know, every time Ray posts a picture, you know, goes crazy on, on, on Twitter. So this time he, he posts a picture. It's, it's Rand. It's, you know, uh, uh, Josh uh, standing there. Uh, he's got, looks like he has a makeup crew person there kind of working on his hair. And he's standing in, amongst these mountains, foggy mountains. So people are thinking it's the mountains of mist and, you know, oh my God, it's just really happening. There's Rand in all his glory. No real news, just little snippets of information that come out. I guess they stopped doing the Wheel of Time Wednesdays on the first of the month. Yeah. So they're just yeah. kind well, of leaking uh, stuff you know, out. After after Justin Bieber joined him, you know. Oh my god. Yeah. That was so funny. Did you see that, Rich? <laughs> I commented that on the last pod. Uh, I did see we something got else trolled. though too. We got We did. Oh the, well not we, the whole community got trolled. Someone went through the whole uh black and white headshots, quotes and tweets, and they had uh Justin Bieber cast as Gawain. They got Lindsay Lohan cast as Elaine and Kathy Griffith cast as Queen oh. Gaze. So here's a bad thing. I kind of fell for that, for the Lindsay Lohan thing, like briefly. <laughs> My first thought was briefly. Isn't she a little old? 
No, my thought was, why do we want to bring diseases into the wheel of time? <laughs> He's got herbs. Yeah. I'm sure Tom's got some too. Yeah, I know. I don't doubt that. <laughs> I, think, I think that's why he had to you know, leave his old job at one point. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's the baby dad. No, just kidding. No, just, just kidding. Not a spoiler. That was not a spoiler. <laughs> oh, man. What? Well, he used to be a plumber. <laughs> He was Mario, wasn't he? He's got a mustache. <laughs> all, all, all people with mustaches are plumbers? Is that what you're saying? All people with mustaches used to be Mario. Used to be Mario. <laughs> Rich, he used to be Mario, didn't he? Rich, you have a mustache? Yeah, I, I do. I still oh. have a mustache. All right. Rock that stash. I do. <laughs> yeah. When you, when you see him on the video and he's got the microphone in front of it, all you can see is above the microphone is his tash poking out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And is it like a full Tom, is it like a Tom Selleck or is it like a a, a, a curly, like Raleigh fingers? That's that I'm going to age myself with that. But for all I mean, those... I would so love a Tom Selleck mustache because his mustache is glorious. Uh, but no, it's not. If And I kind of age myself there. there. But if you don't know who Raleigh fingers is, go Google him. You'll be impressed <laughs> with that mustache. Google he's, me, bro. Um, He's an old base. He's an old baseball player from the seventies, and he has one of those mustaches that kind of curls. Oh so, yes, nice. like 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 a dastardly bad guy, like from the mustache kind of guy. Uh, Rich's got more of a dirty Sanchez going on. Uh, no, <laughs> liar. I mean, it might be, but I call you a liar, sir. How dare you? Sorry. I couldn't resist. Yeah. I know. And, and I'm sorry. Who's strapped to your chest at this moment? Yeah. And this is little Margot. <laughs> she's uh-huh. she's she's subconsciously hearing about BDSMs and Dirty Sanchez's and, and, and threesomes. She's just under a month old. She won't remember this. <laughs> <laughs> it's always there in the subconscious. Yeah. So anyway. So so what are we doing? Are yeah, we, let's bring us back on point. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> Bring us back. So, we are so just so Justin Bieber's the creator. Justin yes. Justin Bieber Bella is the creator. I quit. I quit. If that ever happens, I quit. I'm done. And Lindsay Lohan, Paul Rudd is the androgynous Queen Elaine. Or uh, Princess um, Elaine. Wait, Paul Rudd? I'm out. No. No. Don't you bash Paul Rudd. Oh, the uh, other day, uh, Bill, you'll, you'll, you'll another small tangent, but uh, the last time uh, Rich and I recorded, we came up with a new uh, nickname for, for Master Warder. He is he is now Batman. So he is, he is who am I? I'm Mandragoran. The scene when they come and save Perrin and, and Egwene and um, Byars there talking to Perrin and the two guards behind him just one <laughs> disappears and all of a sudden the second one <laughs> disappears. Then this man in the shadows comes out, gives him the five five step exploding palm technique and, and down goes Byar. He's, he's all Batman. And then he just says it very softly, I'm Batman. I'm Batman. <laughs> I'm Jamaican yeah. Batman. I'm Jamaican <laughs> Batman land. To make a Batman land, I'm to make a man man. That was two weeks ago. We're 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 in the today. We're in the now. Chapter forty, the Web Titans. When last we left Rand, he was yep, he, he bumped his head. He bumped. He, well, he hadn't bumped his head yet. He he heard someone. He fell. He fell. He, he was pondering to himself, why was Logan? Why were those eyes that eyes staring at him? And this random voice appearing from the hev- like from the heavens from nowhere, just. Oh, he's being bonded, silly, or something to that effect. And he's like, what, what? And whoops, and falls 30 feet over the other side of the wall. So hold up. I, I got something here for this. So he Go falls over the ledge. He falls over into an area we talk about. What if this is the same thing like in Final Fantasy VIII where he died? Ooh. Hard. So what Ooh, Rich rest is, of the dream. I win. What Rich is alluding to is uh, Final Fantasy VIII. After the end of the first act, there's a scene where the what a, at that time you, everybody thinks is the big baddie shoots an ice dart or an ice arrow into the main character, and the main character you know gets chunked with this ice and passes out. End scene, and we wake up as the second act. Yeah, and and, and the theories abound that oh maybe the main character Squall dies, and the rest of this game is just him in a dream, which thoroughly was debunked by the game creators, but. So what you're thinking is Rand may have died. Well, yeah, he fell off a ledge and he could have smashed his neck and he's just dreaming as he faintly, this whole rest of the book series, all 14 books is just him slowly drifting. <laughs> the other 13 plus books is just Rand in a dream. Yeah, he's oh slowly my God. dying. I could, I could find lots of evidence to support that. 
<laughs> Boom. <laughs> oh. No, nothing I can say now because it would be spoiler. Did, did you hear that? <laughs> That's the sound of us losing 90% of our listeners. Well, I mean, no, I'm, I'm, let's, let's just say just this. Compared, I'm you just compared new. the whole of the wheel of time to the school is dead theory. <laughs> or you just negated 99% of the book as, yep. as, a, as a dream. I win. <laughs> I win. I'm the new guy. I just, I'm going to come up with these crazy, you know, theories. All complaints, please lodge at Twitter on Hail Blue. Uh, one, five, just kidding. Just kidding. Nine. Yeah, please, please be gentle. <laughs> That's right. So that, mean, that means Naneev is uh, Ultimacia. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so so he falls right. off the ledge, and he wakes up. What happens when he wakes up? Well, he he's he's he still has this vision of Aes Sedai's and false dragons, and he starts to regain his consciousness. And he sits well, up as he dies. Yeah, he's, he's a very he's a very short Beelzebub dream, doesn't he? Is it a Beelzebub dream, or just you know where his brain was? Female voices he was associating with Moraine. He had just seen Loghain, and he was in awe, and shock, and respect of seeing uh, the false dragon paraded. And he passes out, and he wakes up. Yeah, and he sits he, up. Go ahead. He, men- he mentions he mentions like the fear yes. that he feels when Beelzebub's there, and how every part of his body trembles and vibrates. So I think there is a Ooh. brief moment of Beelzebub getting in there. Ah, Beelzebub yeah, makes I'd him agree with vibrates. <laughs> yep. Okay. Beelzebub sitting there on the chair using his vibrator randomly turns up. <laughs> He's like, "Oh, who are you?" Uh... <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> he sits up. <laughs> It's and like then, a, oh. it's like his phone going off or something. And it yes, like, what the hell yes, that? Rich, we're going with that. His phone, yes. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't know what you guys smell for. I meant when I vibrate. His phone obviously vibrating. <laughs> <Jeez. laughs> he was, he like was just in the movies, so he had it on vibrate. You know. <laughs> so he wakes up. He wakes up. He stares up in the. He stares up, and a girl. Well, not even that yet. Before he sits up, he's like, "Oh my god, my head!" And he puts his hand to his head, and he feels it matted, wet with blood. So he's already like, oh my god, it must have, oh my god, what happened? You know, he and died. that's when he realizes, oh wait, there was a female talking to me from somewhere. And that's when, <laughs> that's when he sees this angelic female crawl down a tree. <laughs> so, Rob. Sir. How old is Rand again? I forgot. <laughs> is he 19? <laughs> I, well, I think he's in the 17 to 19 range. Yeah, because um, because she's a few years because uh, yeah, this young lady is a few years younger than him, isn't? A couple of years younger, so I'm going to place her in the sixteen to eighteen range. Man, she is so young. <laughs> she's not Japanese anime young, but she's young. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, carry on. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that'll make, that'll make that'll make sense to people who've read the series before. <laughs> <laughs> so he sees he sees her coming down. He finds the owner of the voice, and as he comes, she is regally dressed. Except for all the smudges from the tree that she was just climbing down. Yeah, yeah. So. He says about how her gowns, like, uh, sort of, it would be like the best feast day gown someone would wear in Emmons Field, and uh, she's just wearing it like it's an old rag. Yep. Yep. <laughs> but she looks extremely <clears throat> regal in it. And the only people that he's seen dressed like that, uh, he he, has, he assigned it to the assassin that they saw in that one town, and mm-hmm. then uh, Mara and Sadai. The only people he's really seen dressed that royally or that that. Well, <laughs> yes, but she, but this, but this young girl seems to be another level as well. Yes, she's she's wearing it very well. She's like you said, it's just a normal wardrobe for her. So is this Rand like seeing this girl and he's thinking that he's I mean, thinking so, right? Yeah. Okay, so he's in yeah. love. Well, he's, he's, no, no, no. It's not, it's not that sort of thing yet. Sure. She's sure. she's very beautiful. He does comment. She's so beautiful. He even feels guilty to Egwene that he has these thoughts. So well, he's. Yes. He's still on the I'm betrothed to Egwene and Egwene train. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I shouldn't even he, be having these thoughts. Because he he says like, oh, you know, she's you know she looks nothing like Egwene. She's got a different body shape, different type of face. You know, she's got bright red curly hair, deep blue eyes, deep blue eyes. Very... She's like she's she's like nothing like Egwene. No. But he <clears throat> he he can't deny it to himself. He actually says like, but you know, I'd be lying to myself. I didn't say she's hot as fuck. So he's very <laughs> sexist and he's comparing women. Uh, what what a tragedy <laughs> this book was written in 1990 as we know I know some, some or released in 1990 I don't know exactly the years when he wrote it but still Rand, Rand likes his lady friends let's put it that way <laughs> <laughs> truer yeah, words yeah. have never been spoken not, not yeah. as much as Matt but he likes <laughs> well Matt likes his ladies too we'll, we'll get we'll get into Matt's Matt's uh, um, adventures in, in, in the uh, 
Ferris acts uh, in later yeah. books. <laughs> Perrin, Perrin just likes hammering his anvil. <laughs> Man, we're never going to get through this chapter. I know. I'm on like, <laughs> I have four pages of notes. I'm like, in the first quarter. <laughs> oh, my God. So, anyway, um, after he's done comparing Egwene to this girl, he notices that uh, a, a second person starts to, to come down the uh, tree. This time, it's, it's, a, it's a boy or, or a young man. He is just as regally dressed as the girl. So, now, now he's starting to be like, ah, oh, shit. What, 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 have I, what have I done? Big, big inner monologue of him saying, I should not be here, but there's nothing he can do about it. So once the girl comes down the tree, she starts to almost Sherlock Holmesian inspect Rand, and he and he even says that she's cataloging everything on him, from his hair to his clothes to to his to his injuries, and she's just taking him in. And that makes me think of how Sherlock Holmes approaches people and, and kind of assesses and deduces from them. Go ahead. No, I said I I agree. She does do that. It's more of her inquisitive uh, nature. Yes. Yes, the way she's been brought up. Yes. Uh, always learning. Yep. So the first thing she does is she realizes that he's got a head injury. And she goes right into administering first aid. Which head? <laughs> Sorry, Karen. <laughs> we don't have time for that. <laughs> so is there is there a rating after explicit? <laughs> yes, it's called, it's, called, it. it's called the Bill rating. <laughs> Rated B for Bill's warped sense of humor. <laughs> so I even commented on here. It's like she's going about first aid, and it was almost naive, like the way she was going about it. Very deliberate. Very don't move. I'm taking care of you. Don't move. I got it. Go ahead. Yeah. So a young man also comments at the time, doesn't he, saying like, "Don't worry, she's had the best training." He even says, oh, she worked on strays all the time. Oh, wait, not say, sorry, not saying that you're a stray, um, but, but you know what I mean? It's almost like he caught himself. He said, oh, that sounded a little inappropriate. Sorry, you're not a stray per se, but you're in good hands. Yeah. You're not going to die. <laughs> well, not by <laughs> her hand. <laughs> Yet as I finger my dagger. <laughs> yeah, that's the other thing. It was, he, it was not in a menacing way, but in a, I may have, I'm just letting you know this is here kind of way. After the two um, regally dressed people started having a little inner monologue between the two of them, he finds out that the boy's name is Gawain and that the woman's or the girl's name is Elaine. I love he, Gawain. <laughs> yeah, not, not everybody has that sentiment, as we'll find out in later books. Uh, Some I of the absolutely Gawain... love him. Especially, especially this early, like when he's really young. It's just like, oh, Gawain's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I, 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 don't, I don't have as much as the disdain for Gawain as... Some of the some of the Wheel of Time fans. He he, he has a good he has a good character arc, but I just uh, especially good... especially like in this chapter, like this is one of my favorite chapters from the first book. Yeah, this is a, I mean it's a beefy just, chapter. It is a beefy chapter, but I love it and I love the banter between him and Egwene. Definitely, you can definitely tell it's brother sister, even yeah. without them having to reference quotes mother. You can tell that they're brother sister the way that they're just bantering back and forth. Mm. It's a it's a. Elaine's des Elaine's determined to, to follow the path that she wants to go, and Gawain is well. I gotta protect you. I might as well just follow you and keep you safe. Nothing I can do about it. <laughs> and it's funny because during the conversations, Ray, Ray, I think Rand randomly asks Gawain, "Do people normally do whatever she says?" And they're both like, "Yeah." Well, <laughs> well apart Duh. from one of apart from two other people. <laughs> yeah, I know. As but we, we find, as we'll meet yet. those we'll meet those two other people later. This uh this episode too so after after this banter and back and forth and she's helping him she's working on his head on top of his body and she sees that he has scrapes from when he climbed up and she starts administering you know first aid on his hands he just point blank says who is your mother anyway and they're both like you still have no clue who we are huh yeah, because at this point they they're like having a conversation between themselves, yeah. and they start dropping in, they start name dropping loads of people. Yes, and they're like people that Rand's like kind of recognizing the names of, like they mention, um, the Elida, uh, yeah, Elida, the Ace Sedai, and I think Gareth that's the one that really, yeah, but I think Elida is the one that really triggers him yep. because it's just like, uh, I was going to go see her at one point, <laughs> yeah, he, but then he I decided contemplated to... that. But everybody, everybody, or Basil the. Queen's blessing uh, innkeeper is like, son, Ooh. stay clear of her. <laughs> yeah, so that and fact, so just stay just, clear of everybody. 
So I think it's that slow realization from Rand that he isn't in just like some rich person's house. He's in some really rich well, person's yeah, house. Yeah, once he asks who who Elaine's mother are mother is, that's when Gawain kind of officially says she's the queen of you know Morgase Trakan, queen of Andor, blah blah blah. You know, and... yeah, I love the way he gives her like full honorific. Yes, <laughs> it's like ten ten minutes long. <laughs> yes. And, More gays and girls, da, 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 Queen of Andor, yeah. the head of and, the White Lion, <laughs> yep. and the royal heir of the Tankard family. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh. And then that's well, when Rand said it all wrong, but all right. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, it's by the grace of the light, Queen of Andor, defender of the realm, protector of the people, high seat of the house of uh, Tarkin. Tarkin all or right. Tarkand? Tarkand, whatever. <laughs> Tarkand. Well, uh, we get the whole I, thing. <laughs> I always, when I read the book, for some reason, my head just changed the word Tankand to Tankard. <laughs> like a big drinking mug. <laughs> We're going to get so, comments but, on that on that lazy Essex tongue of yours. I know it, it's it's even that, it's so bad my Essex tongue that even when I read stuff I change it into just lazy Essex thing. <laughs> <laughs> so we could have kept head. going. I mean, Bill, you don't know, but uh, in uh, Wheel of, or not in uh, Game of Thrones, um, Khaleesi, um, Daenerys Targaryen, she every every book she gets like another title added to her. So by the end of the book, she has like nine titles. And it, that's that's, a, that's one thing. That's, a, dra they, that's a dragon lady, right? Yeah, queen mother of dragons, the unbreaker breaker of chains. You know, blah 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 blah. This is kind of woman the same who sleeps, thing. Woman who sleeps with a dead guy. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen bits. <laughs> <laughs> Phrasing. <laughs> I think everybody's seen seen Daenerys's bits, but you know, hey. <laughs> oh. do, you know what, do you know what? They didn't show her bits in the first film in the first season, so I haven't. Actually, it's the other way around with her. But anyway. <laughs> bringing it back bringing it see i'm actually making them i'm doing your thing i'm making the motion i'm bringing it back so it's at this moment Rand realizes holy shit i've just fallen into the royal garden yeah i'm supposed to be keeping my head down i know so much for laying low everybody's telling me to keep out of sight and now here i am in the bloody freaking royal garden and now he's like ah i've got to go fine. yeah what was that fine. i'm fine <laughs> yeah, I, I'm out. I gotta leave. I'm sorry. You need to be here. He's he's looking at a watch that isn't there on his wrist. Oh, look at that! I gotta go. <laughs> so now Rain this is, is in total. My car. <laughs> he's in total freakout mode. So he's trying to make. Dude, dude, Gadwin, where's my car? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no. Story. Oh my god! Oh, how many more... Welcome to the two and a half hour episode. Never mind. Oh, oh God, no. No, <laughs> we'll have to do a dude. Where's my car? Minute podcast. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, that'd be so. So cool. while they're there talking about the mom, now the who film, dude, all of a sudden shows up? <laughs> <laughs> well, here, okay, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I, I'm. Let's see here. So Rand's in total freakout mode. He tries to make a quick getaway. He's like, I, yep, a piece. I gotta go. But Elaine and Gawain ask for his name. They're both like. We just helped you out. I mean, the least you could do is just tell us who you are. And Rand, truthfully, just Randall Thor, two rivers, Emmons Field. That's who I am. And immediately, what do represent, you... bitch? Yep. <laughs> Ty Sherman Etherin. Anyway, <laughs> Gawain, like a textbook, like when he announced who his mother was, just started to, to recite two rivers, main exports, and the overall temperament of their people as if. He's been trained to learn all the different cities and, and folk within their kingdom, and he's just doing a complete recall of what he knows of the two rivers. So, stubborn as fuck. <laughs> yeah, yes, that's what he stubborn as stone is what I got here. And he even goes ahead and says, Hey Lane, you might want to marry someone for the two rivers. So they probably can put up with your shit. <laughs> yeah, it's the only one who could, it's the only one you wouldn't wear down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Rich is now when we meet the third of Morgase's children. My headcanon for this character, uh, Galad, well, this, Gal Galad Damadred. Go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Is Galad Morgaze's child? Is I thought it was a half. Yeah. I, I, I thought it. Uh, are they all Morgaze's child? I thought they were. All, she, I thought they all had the same dad, but not the same mother. Then, then the okay stepchildren. I, okay, Bill. <laughs> yeah, I think that's right. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. I'm sorry, but third stepchild, maybe whatever in damn, royal. Damn it, words. Rob, do better. Well, I was going on to my head cannon. This guy, to me, when I when I was reading him, you know who I'm thinking of? Tom freaking Brady. Nope. Yes, Mister Perfect. Tom Brady. I don't like Tom Brady, Please but he's Mister Perfect, and he wins all the time. And I don't well, except for this year, but he wins almost all the time. 
and that's how so, Galad seems to me. Always doing so the right I, thing. Do you know I who don't Tom? Really know who? I I know who Tom Brady is, but I don't like. I know he's like an American football player for he the is. Patriots. He, that is yeah, correct. I yeah, a, I don't know anything other than that. Everybody so, uh, hates I'm, him I'm outside. Just gonna of... pretend, I'm just going to pretend he's Paul Rudd. <laughs> <laughs> well, Paul Rudd's like a small oh. Tom Brady. Everyone, he everyone wins all the time. Rudd. Everybody no, else. Everybody outside of New England really can't stand this guy because he always freaking wins. And he's always doing the right thing, that kind of thing. That's, that's why I kind of put him and uh, Gallad together because Gallad always doing the right thing, and he's so handsome. Tom Brady's yeah, Gallad, dating Gallad's model, a so it's the same dick. thing, man. Was that? Gallad's a massive dick. <laughs> he is. I'm just doing what's right. Doing what's right. Between, I'd rather be a dick to you as long as I know I'm doing the right thing. And as we find out, he'll, Gallad's story will take a specific turn with this same kind of thinking. But in this moment, he sees he sees that, uh, well, first off, I, I commented, he's, even Brand says, damn, this guy must must get a lot of uh, tail. He's beautiful. He's, he's very handsome. He's, he's yeah. I can't. He's the most make... handsome man he's ever seen. Yeah, I know. <laughs> suddenly, just suddenly comes up and goes, what the fuck are you doing? Boy. <laughs> and I know Rand, Rand is like a 17, 18 year old boy, but man, he's got to get his mind. He's, he has one thing on his mind. He's seeing princesses come down the, come down the tree. Sorry, my phone. Sorry, <laughs> I couldn't quite hear. Yeah. yeah stupid Siri. Go, go away, Siri. Said. I know. <laughs> You're not in the wheel of time. Go away. <laughs> <laughs> Gala comes out and he's all pomp and circumstance. And Elena Gowling, like, get out of here, Gallad, you dumbass. Get out of here. We don't want anything to do with you. And, of course, you know, Mr. Mr. Gotta Do the Right Thing says, Abbas, there's a stranger here amongst you royal in the royal garden. Let me take care of this. Come with me, you know, you, you, you heathen. And Elena's like, shut up. Go away. I outrank you. Yeah. Screw off. The way, yeah, the way she is just like, no. She's like, <laughs> He's like, my guest. She's like, please. <laughs> After arguing a little bit, Gallat says, okay. She tells him to screw off, so he screws off, and he goes and disappears. So Galad <laughs> yeah. goes away, and immediately Gawain's like, you know what he's doing. He's he's <laughs> going to run and tell mommy on us. He's masturbating in a bush. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, he's uh, yeah, he's running off to tell the guards, basically. Yeah, he's going to tell <laughs> the guards. Like, this is, yeah, this is where they give us the uh, the spiel that, you know, Galad always does the right thing. <laughs> he, Elaine's yeah. just told him to leave us alone. It's his guest and not to do anything. So he's immediately gone off to tell the uh, the guards that there's an intruder in the gardens. <laughs> yeah, he didn't lie. I mean, that, that was another thing. He didn't lie. He very word crafting told them there's an intruder, which is not false, in the gardens and he's armed. Yeah. And he worded and... it just right so he wasn't lying. And the daughter heir is standing over there. As well. <laughs> yes, and, he, and he's hovering around important people. Minutes after Gallad leaves, the Queen's Guard storms into the Royal Garden to seize Elaine's guest. As I have in quotations, because she keeps calling him her guest. And as certain guest rights should be, should be uh, noticed, because she has claimed him as guest right. Mm. But every sword and arrow is cocked and looked and pointing at Rand. <laughs> yes, and we are introduced <laughs> to another character. I forget his exact rank, but the officer Talonvor... Yes, he's got one gold knot. None, yeah, he, <laughs> somewhere in the chapter, his uh, official ranking is is in there, but I don't have it. I don't have it written down here. But uh, I think he was just guard captain, isn't he? Guard, maybe he was guard captain. So guard Talon, captain of the garden. So Talon Four informs that he has been commanded by the queen to apprehend all strays found on palace grounds. So Elaine starts to barter to banter words with him. You know, she's you know he's my guest. You have no right to seize and control my guest. I feel you know. so sorry for this, Captain. Yeah. Well, she <laughs> says, knowing that the Queen is with Loghain, she says, I demand you take us to my mom right now and talk this out, knowing that he can't do that because she's she, with Loghain. <laughs> yeah, she just beat, she just browbeats this poor Captain. <laughs> so, <laughs> he's just like, he's obviously like, he's used to being in charge of his troops who are supposed to listen to every single word he says. And she's just like... She's like one of the few people who can just contradict him, and she does it so well. Yes, she she <laughs> that part of being royal, she got down pat. Yes. Unfortunately, one of uh, Talonvor's underlings comes up to him, whispers something into his ear, and he, he kind of gets a little little sly smile, and he's like, 
Uh, Your Grace, it is my duty to inform you that your mother, the Queen, has instructed me to bring all three of you to her at this moment. And then yes, she goes, can... oh, crap. Yeah. So Glad's, Glad's gone and told her. <laughs> yes, he ran and told Mommy. And <laughs> Elaine's plan to kind of stymie or stifle or, or filibuster to avoid getting ran detained backfires on her. Because her mom actually said, yeah, I want to see, I want him, and I want my son, I want my daughter here too, now. Uh, shit. She's out of, a, she's, Elaine's at, quit thinking, but now out of options, because she's been, the one person that can command her has now summoned her into court. So she's like, <laughs> uh, okay. And even but as she, her, she tried, still manages to just swing the upper hand, though, doesn't she? She, she, well, she tries to. And as they're making their way to the queen, Elaine's telling the boys, "Stop, quiet. I'm, let me think. I'm, let me think out a way to talk my way out of this." As they make their way towards court, Rand finally takes in how beautiful the royal garden is, because as we know, winter has been holding on a little too long in this land, and. It's been a while, I guess, since he's seen such lush green gardens. And we come to find out that these are magically enhanced gardens by Elida. Rand does realize, you know, this is real, the one... Real gardens, not lady gardens. Yes. <laughs> yes, okay. No, we're not talking about Elida's, uh, Elida's lady garden. Okay, cool. Uh, no, no one wants to talk about Elida's lady garden. <laughs> Trust me. You know. What's wrong with you? Uh, hey, hey, I like strong women. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, I love you, Bill. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Oh, I won't. <laughs> so, unless it's more, unless it's more guys, she can tell me whatever she wants. Hey, was well, well, that 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 actually comes up to my next note here? So, as they enter the Queen's court, Rand attempts sees Gawain give a you know a regal bow, and he and he's giving his best interpretation of Gawain's bow to show respect to the Queen. And he, he, he takes, does the bow somewhat awkwardly, but Rand internally comments to himself that the queen is just as beautiful as Elaine, just more mature and more regal. Yes, more aged. A more aged beauty. Have you guys ever seen the movie Meet the Fockers? Yep. <laughs> yes. The scene where he's up on, where Ben Stiller's up on stage and he goes, if you, if you ever want to know what, what your loved one's going to look like later in life, you know, check out her mother. Well, I'm a looking and I'm a liking. <laughs> I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure though that um, the woman from Meet the Fuckers, who's married to Ben Stiller in that film, does not end up looking like Barbara Streisand when she gets old. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, Barbara Streisand is Ben Stiller's mum. Sorry, it's I'll the other. Uh, I'm blank on her name. It's the other other mother. Okay, I can see Ben Stiller looking like Barbara Streisand when he gets old. That's fine. <laughs> I was talking about the women. How did you get onto Ben Stiller? because <laughs> Bob Streisand was his mum I got it completely wrong <laughs> you were right <laughs> so and then Rain is like what the hell are you doing it's the queen she's not a person it was funny the way he kind of chides himself he's like stop thinking of the queen I think he even comments that like I danced with her at springtime festival he says something some kind of comment oh about, yeah you know he he says like um, any one of the men would be queuing up at springtime festival yeah. to dance with her even if her cooking was really bad <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, you you can see why Jordan, why Robert Jordan gets a lot of comments about being sexist. Oh my god, but that's still funny. That's... But this is the fan, this is the fantasy world he's he's set this. Then he's like, it's like, it's the queen. Very... What the hell are you doing? Yeah. Oh, get your head out of your rump. As they approach the queen, Rand sees two people on either side of Queen Morgase, and he's able to deduce that one of them is probably Elida Sedai, and the other one. It's probably Captain General Gareth Byrne. Oh, Is it Byrne or Bryn? I always say Byrne. <laughs> I always say Byrne. We'll probably be corrected on that. Probably. Probably, yeah. Odds oh, are. How do you, how'd you pronounce his name? Tell me, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> he corrects me and everything. <laughs> uh, yes. After after they give their bows and their curtsies and all that, Elaine starts starts to, to, to banter. And she gets one where she goes, mother, and then immediately is like, enough. Grown-ups are talking. And like I said, the one person that can take control over Elaine takes control of the situation. And she's immediately cut off by Morghese. She goes, I have to hear. This is her house, and she literally is the queen. No no one no one gets anything by her. She commands she that she court. Does, 
she doesn't even care that Rand's there to start with. No, it's <laughs> it's her first concern is why did you, you disobey me? <laughs> you were up a tree again, weren't you? And yeah. I think as she said that she picks out a little branch from her hair. <laughs> Yeah, and she has nowhere. To, she doesn't want to throw it on the floor. She's got nowhere to put it, so she just grips it in her hand. <laughs> Jordan's Jordan's really firing on all cylinders in this chapter. He is. It's like I said, this is one of my favorite chapters. It's just, I've got some. I've got some nice end thoughts when we get there. So. Okay, if we ever do. <laughs> um, if we ever do. <laughs> so yeah, she's she's upset that that she gets upset at Elaine for disobeying the direct order to to stay in her room, and then she's disappointed in Galwin for not doing a better job of of taking care of his sister. So, yeah. so one shot's like a double slap against both of these guys. Yeah, and she mentions a lot about them going north at yes. this point. That, and I yes. think they're going to travel north with Loghain as well on his way That's to the thing. Is he, she, Lelaine just said, I wanted to see it. I just wanted to see Loghain. What's the harm in that? And Morgan's like, I don't want you near him. I don't want you to look at him. He's dangerous. I don't even want him in my city. And the only reason he was brought to court in front of Morgan's was more of a, a PR campaign to to show Andor's strength. If if, if Morgase didn't have to do it, she would have had a, she would have just shipped him off and had him just bypass came all together. But now I just what, I just I just want to describe uh, Elida and how she's um, how she's portrayed in this scene. Okay. So because like you say they're they're sitting so you got um, Elida one side and Gareth the other side of um, mm -hmm. Morgase, but Elida is sitting there not looking at anyone <laughs> in the room. I think she's, she's just, knitting. She's just knitting. Yeah. And he mentions like all you can hear at one point when the room goes quiet, it's just <laughs> she's knitting away. So she's just like sitting there, like she's not got a care in the world, like she's not sitting next to a queen. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> this woman has got some big balls and then just occasionally just pipes up. <laughs> well, outside of Moraine and the two uh Aes Sedai that were guarding Logan, this is this is the only other Aes Sedai that the reader has encountered yet. Maureen has her own personality in her own way, and it's kind of naive to think that all Aes Sedai carry themselves the same way that Maureen does. Even though Rand has been warned to stay clear of Elida, he still kind of expects that kind of personality, mm. but sorely so yeah, is kind mistaken. Of, there, is like a, there is like a, uh, a way that I, Aes Sedai tend to carry themselves. Yes. But yeah, but they all have very varying personalities, especially if they're from like differing genres. Yes. Hello, Margo. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> she had a nice little Margo, squeak. Margo Sadai. Margo's like, yeah, I'm a Sadai. <laughs> <laughs> Am I gonna weave the power? I'm gonna bring Judge lightning down on your asses. <laughs> Um, yeah, so no, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just, yeah, I just like the way Elida is sitting there. Yeah, and then it's like, at this point that we find out that Elaine and Galwin are going to be making their trek north to Tarvalon. Uh, yep. Elaine, one of them's going to be a warder, right? And one of the other one's going to go through the Aes Sedai training. Yes, Elaine yes. is to train as an Aes Sedai, and Galwin is to train with the warders. And I think he's also supposed to learn how to run state or or be a um, military. I guess learn military uh, strategies too. I think that was also yeah, part okay. of this. I don't think they mention Deal. it here in this theme, but if, um, no, they do. I'm pr no, no, no I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, something else uh, about oh. um, how the Queen of Andor's are always sent to Tarvalon when they're young to go through training. Yeah, there's always even if seems... they even if they haven't got any uh, like Ace of Eye power. I think yeah, it's been like a almost <clears> like a <throat> pact, a treaty between Tarvalon and Caitlin that that the daughter heir is to at least train yeah. and and. I guess they're given uh, courtly train training on courtly duties and politics too. I think and, I think it's mostly politics because, like you know, the Aes Sedai of this world have got a finger in every single exactly. <laughs> kingdom. Um, Very and, much in the politics. Yeah, they're they're influencing every single one and trying to control the world. <laughs> and so part of that is you know with the Andor, it's very easy because the the head of Andor always comes to Tarvalon for training for like several years. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I love I love the uh transition here. Day. <laughs> day. God, where <laughs> Queen <laughs> Morgase is great. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good movie. It is a good movie. So Queen Morgase is keeping her eyes on Elaine and focuses shift on to Rand while keeping her eyes on Elaine. So as she's watching Elaine, she goes, and what do we do about your guest? And she like <laughs> offers a hand out to Rand but keeps her steel gaze on Elaine. So you can just tell how she just completely controls the court. She completely controls the conversation. And 
it's almost like Rain is like, oh, I hope they had forgotten about me. No, oh, jeez. <laughs> so that is when Elaine starts to go into, I've claimed him as guest rights with Rand. I wanted to get an un... She, she actually has a, puts up a good point here. She wanted to get an unfiltered look at one of her loyal subjects from the Two Rivers. So because yes, she's she's always introduced from people from different parts of the Andor Kingdom, but it's always with like supervisors and under strict circumstances. Yes. So she wanted this kind of unfiltered, unbiased look at one one of her one of her people. Dot 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 from the two rivers. And Elida's like, this guy's never from the two rivers. Well, <laughs> even before that, Morgase Morgase is kind of like, oh, you guys don't follow history, do you? Yeah, you need to read. So you need to read those books, but yeah, we need to read those books. It's been six <laughs> generations since a tax man has gone to collect from the two rivers, and it's been seven generations since the royal guard has even stepped foot in their city proper. They don't even realize that they're part of our kingdom. And then Rand kind of shuffles at his feet because that's exactly <laughs> as he thought when someone else mentioned that. Yeah, he said he, said he was really confused when someone said, "You're yeah, part of the kingdom of Endor." And he was like, "Really? We are. We have a queen." <laughs> yeah. And even in that little shuffle, Morgase picks up on it, and she goes, "You see, <laughs> it's, it's I can yeah. even brand doing the smallest little like maybe look down to his shoes or something at her mentioning that, and her picking up on that, and be like, "See, even he doesn't believe he's part of this kingdom." And they're about to get taxed out the butt. Yeah, I know. And I was like, <laughs> but "Now that I've remembered that there." <laughs> Yeah, I know. We're going you to institute the Al Thor tax. So now you guys will pay us one half of all your incomes and blame Al Thor. Plus you're uh, six generations late, so I make that 450 years you got to catch up on. That's, that's a hefty amount of taxation and arrears that we need to collect on. Thank you. Uh, we need to build a wall, so the money's got to come from somewhere. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Trump said I. Are you saying Donald Trump said I? Trump to die, yeah, you know, Boris to die. Boris to die. They're all part they're all part of the same jar. I don't know uh, which one it is. <laughs> the, the the clear clear the brown jar the brown jar <laughs> as they slowly turn the world as they slowly turn the world to shit. <laughs> the the, the poopa jar. Yep. <laughs> Isn't there there already is a brown, so we'll just say they're the poopa jar. Oh, I love the brown jar as well. They're one of my favorites. Yes. <laughs> So, what the hell's happening? <laughs> sorry, we, we jumped. We not really spoilers, but yeah, tangents. So, tangents. Yes, we talked yeah, about brown what, tangents. Yeah, <laughs> Bill's back, so we have to have at least seven or eight tangents every episode. Hey, you two yes. went on a tangent about Paul Rudd for about half an hour. I was just <laughs> to tweet you. I so now they talk you. about real quick, Kate. Let's get back. I can I can throw this back here. We talk about what Rand's hair and Mark sword. Well, yes. Um, well, upon hearing that. He's from the two rivers. That's when Elida looks up from her, or she doesn't look up yet from her knitting, but that's when she starts to chime in. He does not have the look of a two rivers folks, so she's already starting to plant seeds of doubt in the queen's mind. He has, hmm. you know, and, and this is not the first time that Rain has been told he doesn't quite have the look of of a uh, yeah. two rivers folk. I think Loyal even commented that he he didn't look like two rivers folk. No, Loyal actually says he looks more like an Aeel man. Aeel man, and, yes, um, as, yeah. as we may find yeah. out later this chapter. And uh, and so, yeah, Rand sort of like, she says, you know, he's he's too tall. <laughs> his eyes are grey. Yeah. <laughs> his hair's the wrong colour. Like, this, 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 this guy's not from the Two Rivers. No. And Rand's just like, no, I am from Two Rivers. I'm from Edmunds Field. He gets really defensive. He's, he's like, he has the tongue, but he does not have the look. And oh, then, but that, does, that doesn't come until the very end of the time. Yes. Yes. And then the judgment passed. But... Elida does then, as Rich mentioned, comments on the Heron Mark sword. And well, she gets almost... up she gets up and walks over to him, doesn't it? I just sorry, I just love this scene. Oh yeah. This, this will of, be a good she, scene to watch. She like suddenly, you know, because Rand notices at one point, you know, suddenly the clicking stopped and he looks and she's just staring at him. She's just giving him like the death look. <laughs> yes. And then yeah, at this point she gets up, she goes over to him and is just like, Yeah, you're too tall, your eyes are grey, you don't look anything like a two rivers man. And he says, like, yeah, you know, well, my father's from the Two Rivers and uh, my mother was an outlander. That's why I look different. Yes. <laughs> and then she grabs the hilt of his sword, which, of course, has got this, has got this uh, red ribbon wrapped around it, uh, which represents that he's uh, you know, supposed to be supporting the queen. Yes. And she holds the ribbon and then her eyes widen. I, I just love the way Jordan describes the scene. Her eyes go wide and she's like, and you've got a heron marked blade. 
With and the then the whisper, room well, with erupts. the whisper that everybody hears. Yes. <laughs> yes, the whisper that everybody hears, and the room just erupts and within seconds. Yeah. Like <gasps> Gareth, Gareth is standing between Rand and the Queen. There's loads of guards trying to get in between um, the girl and Gadwin. Um, you know, Elena just, Darwin. Yeah, everyone just basically draws swords and is like, "What?" Well, I got to know here. Rand's it's like, like, "What did I do?" It's like, yeah, Rand still doesn't know what a heron mark blade means. The reader doesn't yes. really know what a heron mark blade means, except that. Everybody's freaking out. Uh, last chapter, Languin, the the cell sword that works at the Queen's Blessing, commented yeah, to Rain, hey, uh, if things go down, if things ever went south, I'd sure like to have your help. And Rain's like, how good of a swordman do you think I am? I, I got a sword, but you know, train, but you know, I don't think I'm up to your your level of, of skill. Yeah, so I like the fact that with uh, two of the guards, he mentions like they take a step back in order to get enough room to attack him. Yeah. Uh, they look like they are ready to die <laughs> to, protect, <laughs> to protect everyone in the room it's just like yeah so they've heard the name heron sword and they're like okay i'm gonna die but i'm gonna do my best to protect everyone <laughs> and rand is like what i'm confused yeah he doesn't <laughs> yeah gonna he, do? he doesn't know how how uh baller a heron mark sword is he's just yeah. carrying it as a memento from his father yes and that's that's exactly what he says he says my father gave me this sword and it's like, how are we supposed to believe this? And then Gareth just suddenly pipes up out of nowhere. It's just like, no, it's, it belongs to him. He has a look. Like, yeah, it's just like, you can see. You can see how it fits him. It wear, He wears it well. That is his sword, no matter what you think. Yeah, <laughs> or if he's be young. confusing it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He, wanna, he, may, he may not know how to use his sword, but damn it. <laughs> it looks good. <laughs> damn it, that sword looks good. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then Elida starts to dance with her words. And starts. She doesn't accuse Rand of anything, but she's like, "There's something fishy. I don't know what yeah, it is." How have you arrived at this moment? <laughs> yeah. Elaine is begging her mother to show mercy on Rand. Morgase is like, "What are you doing, Elida? You, you're naming him a dark friend. You're naming him a. What are you doing? You, you, what are you doing? You got to tell me what you're doing." And then yeah. that's. Go ahead. Yeah. No, I said I, I agree. Like. That whole dance was happening the entire time, yeah. trying to figure out what the right thing to do. And Morgay's actually surprises me on what she's gonna do. Well, yeah, we'll get to that. We I have a couple notes on that too. As Elida's dancing around with accusations, not accusations, Morgay says, "I command you to give me a foretelling." And it's at this moment that we find out that Elida is a prophet. Yes. And she she occasionally sees the pattern and can yes. give foretelling. She can read the it. pattern and, and they call they call it foretelling, but essentially she's a prophet and it's at this time that Morgay's like, I command you and it's funny because she says turn the page. She says to, <laughs> to Elida, I command you to give me a foretelling, and then she even adds, and tell it to me clearly. <laughs> yeah, don't give me any of your I said I crap. <laughs> I know, I know. So have you have you got the foretelling? Because it's confusing to tell. <laughs> uh, I don't have the exact quote. Yeah, that's, that's all right. Close enough. <laughs> so I have... Uh, hold on. You're sorry. Uh, I got it. I, okay, go ahead. I got it. So I'll read it from a website here. I just pulled it up. So from the fandom for Wheel of Time, it's where I get a lot of my notes and stuff too. That way I stay up to date. But the Dark One sits in Shale Ghoul. The shadow lies across the pattern. And the future is balanced on the point of a pin. This one is dangerous. This I foretell. And I swear under the light that I can see no clearer. From this day, Andor marches towards pain and division. The shadow has yet to be darkened to its blackest. And I cannot see if the light will come after. Where the world has, weep, has wept one tear. It will weep thousands. This I foretell. This too. I foretell pain and division come to the whole world, and this man stands at the heart of it. That last bit's the key part. That, and that last man is Paul Rudd. Yeah, <laughs> Paul Rudd. And Ant-Man <laughs> stands at the heart of it all. And I'm sure Rand <laughs> at that <laughs> point just craps his pants and like, hey, what? <laughs> well, yeah, that's as, as they're walking out later in the chapter, he's, that's, he's passing all this, you know, in the palace and through everything, and all he could think about is, uh, at the heart of what? You know, <laughs> I don't like that. After she gets Elida's foretelling, she asks Gareth for advice. It's funny because Gareth's like, you know what? Some time in the cooler would do him good. Yep. And nope. even Elida says, 
do you know what? I wouldn't mind him being in prison either because I could do with a couple of days of examining this boy and see if I get a few more foretellings. Because yeah. her thought, because the thing is, she has a foretelling at this point. But one of the things I don't mention is that her foretellings are really rare. <laughs> I know. She doesn't have. It's not like she just you know she's sitting in the bath every day and goes, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think this I predict. Today. I predict pizza for dinner time. It's <laughs> it's just like <laughs> yeah, very rarely. Yeah, very rarely she's in a situation and suddenly a foretelling will come along. So it was really like you could see the fact that. If, so this is one of the cool sort of things in the background. So more gaze notices. Elida's reaction. It's just like you're having a foretelling. You fucking tell me what it is <laughs> now. Yes. <laughs> and then yeah, and then Elida just yes, plainly speaks out the foretelling to everyone. And uh, yeah, it's just cool. And so yeah, so they all, everyone says yeah, I think some time in prison will do him good. And Morgays is just like nah, screw you all. <laughs> so we'll release him. Take him out of the city. She gets Elida, who's like he could be really bad. Then she gets Gareth, who's like I throw him in the slammer. And she goes, well, I'll give my my version of it. You're free to go. You know, she she logically comes through everything, and she ignores everybody else, and says, "Because because Gareth even says go. like, I don't think I don't think the boy's dangerous. <laughs> I don't think he's dangerous, but I think you know to be careful. <laughs> we should we should lock him up. But yeah, they they decide more more. Well, the gaze decides, let him go, let him go free. You know, it's been a while since I met someone from the Two Rivers, but I remember how they're. I remember the sound of their tongue and he has the sound of two rivers on his tongue. So she's convinced this guy's from the two rivers and he's telling the truth. Yep. <laughs> she says about how his, his story about the, um, yeah, she says his story about where he got his soul, his sword from his father is so ridiculous that it's too ridiculous to be a lie. <laughs> and so, yeah, he's fine. I think it was Tavi Ren. Yeah. Uh, basically get him out of there. There's so much Tavrien going on in this chapter, which is the reason uh, Tavirin, which is the reason why I love it. Love the hocus pocus. There's so much of it. The whole fact that you know, uh, the chapter before this and his journey through the city to get him on top of the wall. That was all Tavirin. Yeah, just to uh, meet these people. Yeah, to be in the exact place to fall into the garden, to meet the daughter heir first, and then to be presented in front of um, more gays. And Elida and Gareth, uh, so that Gareth recognizes him as being like a good person and you know, covering his sword story. The fact that even when he arrived in the city and he randomly bought a bit of red ribbon to cover up the hero mark on his sword, the fact that he had the hero mark on there was the thing that it convinced um, Elaine that he was a good Queen's man, which he mentions. So, all these little factors are coming together. So, suddenly, Rand, who's been like, you know running from town to town trying to escape dark friends sleeping in howlbells has suddenly been presented to the most powerful people some of the most powerful people on the planet <laughs> true and it's like one moment and it's just like all these little tarviran points have come together so we could have this moment and then elida has a foretelling can it's just imagine, great it's just great getting out of the castle yeah, what <laughs> was it or trying to escape, him, like leaving the castle, like escape and everything. Oh my god, yeah, that, that'd be uh... taking off running, like holy crap! <laughs> <laughs> and you pull Red comes along. <laughs> yeah, Paul Red scoops him up, followed by Benny Hill music. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, my next thing, as as they're as as they're escorting him to the palace gates, he ignores all the splendor and beauty. All he can think about is Elida's foretelling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it's pretty uh-huh. heavy. Yeah, you can't blame him really. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, yeah the, the the world's gonna turn to shit, and it's something to do with you. <laughs> well, good luck. Take take fucking care. Yeah, no. take care. Peace. I'm out. So <laughs> as they give their goodbyes, he gets two. He gets two gut punch. He gets two two more kind of gut punches here. As <laughs> I love this bit. <laughs> yeah, as as Elaine gives her goodbyes, she playfully lets slip that she thinks Fran's handsome. It's like, what? Yeah. wait, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. She's like, if I'd said to mother I thought you was handsome, she'd have definitely put you in jail. And then she just walks off. <laughs> He's like, what? Ooh. Come back. Sorry. I've got a hotel room. And then and then Gawain, <laughs> Gawain follows that up by saying, if you put a shufa on your head, you'd be the spitting image of spitting image of an aisleman. It's like, again? Wait, what? Oh. So he's already just they're kind of crushed here. <laughs> Poor old Rand. He's been pulled from pillar to post. <laughs> all those, all those Tarvir and things pulling at his threads. 
But yeah, it's just um, uh, then that brings the chapter to a close, doesn't it? Uh, yeah. yeah, my last my last bit here says as Rand leaves the palace grounds, he doesn't walk back to the Queen's Blessing. He runs. Yeah, he probably not really run. He probably you know prances or you know hops and skips and tries to get as much ground between him and the castle as possible. This will lead us into readings with Rob. Yay! And I I took this beautiful ending of the chapter where he he gets a flirtiness friend, then some some uh, you look like an Ireland stuff. So readings with Rob. And now the Taveren present to you. Readings with Rob. Chapter 40, The Web Titans. To his surprise, Elaine and Gawain exchanged a few words outside the door, then fell in beside him. Talonvor was surprised too. The young officer looked from them back to the doors, closing now. Like my mother, Elaine said, ordered him to be escorted from the palace and stuff, Talonvor, with every courtesy. Like, what are you waiting for? Talonvor scowled at the doors, behind which the queen was conferring with her advisors. Nothing, my lady, he said sourly, and needlessly ordered the escort forward. The wonders of the palace slid by Rand unseen. He was befuddled, snatches of thought spinning by too fast to grasp. You have not the look. The man stands at the heart of it. The escort stopped. He blinked startled to find himself in the great court at the front of the palace, standing at the tall, gilded gates gleaming in the sun. Those gates would not be opened for a single man, certainly not for a trespasser, even if the daughter heir did claim guest right for him. Wordlessly, Talonvor unbarred a sally port and a small door set within one gate. Like it's the custom, Elaine said, to escort guests as far as the gate, but not to, like, watch him go and stuff. It is the pleasure of the guest company that should be remembered right, not the sadness of parting. Uh, uh, thank you, my lady, Rand said. He touched the scarf bandaging his head. For everything. Uh, custom in the two rivers is for a guest to bring a small gift? I'm afraid I have nothing. Although, he added dryly, apparently I did teach you something of the two rivers folk. Like, if I tell mother I think you were handsome... She certainly would have had you, like, locked in a cell and stuff. Elaine favored him with a dazzling smile. Fare you well, Randall Thor. Gaping, he watched her go, a younger version of Morgase's beauty and majesty. Don't try to bandy words with her, Gawain laughed. She will win every time. Rand nodded. Handsome? Light. The daughter heir to the throne of Andor? He gave himself a shake to clear his head. Gawain seemed to be waiting for something. Rand looked at him for a moment. Uh, my lord, oh, when I told you I was from the Two Rivers, you were surprised. And everyone else, your mother, uh, Lord Gareth, uh, Elida Sedai, uh, a shiver ran down his back. None of them... He could not finish it. He was not even sure why he started. I am Tam Althor's son, even if I was not born in the two rivers. Garwin nodded as if it was for this he had been waiting. Still, he hesitated. Rand opened his mouth to take back the unspoken question, and Garwin said, Wrap a chauffeur around your head, Rand, and you would be the image of an Isleman. Odd, since Mother seems to think you sound like a two rivers man, at least. I wish we could have to come to know one another, Randall Thor. Fare you well. And Eilman? That was Readings with Rob. If there's a passage in an upcoming chapter you wish to have read on the podcast, simply tweet us at TavirenPod with your request. And that was Readings with Rob. <laughs> and I hope I let these guys preview my new voices. Uh, I I for I did for Elaine and for Gawain. Uh, I hope I hope uh, they're received well. It's always yeah. always interesting when I try new voices. Oh, I just I just every time you do one, as, as long as if my knee's in the chapter, you have to do Nani's voice. <laughs> she sounds like the guy who does the parrot from Aladdin. That's Gilbert Godfrey. <laughs> that is high praise. <laughs> I just I just love it. <laughs> 
<laughs> this is so funny. I'm sure he was in a film called Child's Play or something. <laughs> yes, he was. He yeah, was in Child's just... Play? Yes, he was. <laughs> and I just... He so was. Yeah, and I was just like, I just, every time you're doing it, I could just picture you're him. You're giving me a heart like... attack. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, good. so yeah, I hope everybody liked um, Valley Girl Elaine. I, I tried my best for a Valley Girl. Oh, you didn't go Valley Girl, did you? Yes, you didn't. Oh, I didn't get. To, I didn't get a chance to listen to it. Oh, uh, spoilers now for you. Valley Girl, <laughs> she's a Valley Girl. Oh my gosh! And then, oh sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Gag like me Rand, with a spoon. Rand, like just Rand, you're the food. dragon reborn and stuff. <laughs> yeah. <I'm> so hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Rich. <laughs> I think I went. I went. Oh with my that. God! Gag Rich with a spoon. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I went with my horrible uh, rendition of, of Dave Mustaine for for Gawain. So oh, yeah, <laughs> Dave Mustaine. <laughs> you ran. You look like an Islesman. You look right. like an Islesman. Do you do? <laughs> All right, oh guys. God, took them on. I think we have officially <laughs> recorded our biggest podcast to date. Woohoo! Yes. <laughs> Woohoo! Yeah. Rich, you can go eat now. Yes. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> All right, are we going to say goodbye now? We're going to yeah, say yeah. goodbye. Uh, what are you going to do, Bill? Uh, I'm going to uh, go to bed. You're going to go to bed? Rich carbo loading. <laughs> <laughs> I am going. What am I? I'm going to. I'm going to ask uh, the princess to, to, to apply more uh, um, bandages to my head. Oh, yeah. That sounds like a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> Not that head, darling. And Richard, <laughs> you're going to, Richard's going to go eat. Yep. I'm starving, folks. <laughs> All right, see everybody, everybody. Next time. See you next week. Bye. 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 See you in the pan. Now that our heroic trio have left the familiar confines of the two rivers, they find themselves being chased by all sorts of denizens of the Dark One. Our party has been scattered, and the boys separated from Marvrain and Lan. Let us hope that luck, or some other force, can keep them safe. Uh, Bill? Bill? Billiam! Put that dagger down! You have no idea where in creation that's been! No, no, Rich. I don't have an extra cloak with me. Maybe if you didn't ride your horse straight into the Aranel, you wouldn't have this problem, hmm? For crying out loud, Robert, I know that girl from Berlon said weird things to you, but you shouldn't let it get under your skin so much. What are you, Eleven? You all remind me of a younger version of myself. Why, back in Watch Hill, I would... friends, this is Troidal Power, host of the Troidal Power Presents the Power Playthroughs podcast with Troidal Power, a podcast where I, your host, Troidal Power, play through games in a powerful way. And I'm inviting you to listen to Troidal Power Presents the Power Playthroughs podcast with Troidal Power, a podcast where I, your host, Troidal Power, play through games in a powerful way. You can find it and a lot of other weird shows at probablywork.com. This has been a presentation of the We Can Make This Work Probably Network. Follow us on Twitter at Probably Work for more of our questionable content. Also, we have a website called probablywork.com. Oh, bonjour. Oh, oh there he is. Look, you the fake you British you guy. You didn't I mean, give me a ding dong when you were here. Ding dong. I heard a ding dong. There we go. Oh, I think I have my outtake now. <laughs>